This is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. What I want to say to you is please stop being so intimidated by people. Stop being so bothered and worried about what people think about you. Stop being so afraid of people's faces and their reactions towards you. And I also ask you to stop being so easily controlled and manipulated. Don't accept the guilt trips that are laid on you. Don't accept their terror, their tyranny. Don't accept the threats. Don't accept those facial expressions that make you want to shudder in the bottom of your knees. Deuteronomy chapter 7. And he says this even more strongly than I do. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto thy son, unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they shall turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves, and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of the bondman from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, and repay them that hate him to their face, mm, to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes, and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he sware unto thy fathers. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. And he will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine and thine oil, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep and the land which he sware unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shalt not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eye shall have no pity upon them, neither shalt thou serve their gods, for that will be a snare unto thee. If thou shalt say in thine heart, These nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? Thou shalt not be afraid of them, but thou shalt well remember what the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh and unto all Egypt. The great temptations which thine eyes saw, and the signs, and the wonders, and the mighty hand, and the stretched out arm which the Lord thy God brought thee out, so shalt the Lord thy God do unto all the people of whom thou art afraid. Moreover, 
the Lord thy God will send the hornet among them, and unto they that are left, and hide themselves from thee, be destroyed. Thou shalt not be affrighted at them, for the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God, a terrible, and the Lord thy God will put out those nations before thee by little and little. Thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beast of the field increase upon thee, but the Lord thy God shall deliver them unto thee and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction until they be destroyed. And he shall deliver their kings unto thine hand, and thou shalt destroy their name from under heaven. And there shall no man be able to stand before thee until thou have destroyed them. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination unto thy house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and shalt utterly abhor it. For it is a cursed thing. Many times we allow people to rule our lives. We allow opinions to direct our paths. Human opinions. Opinions. We allow attitudes to intimidate us. To scare us away. To back us down. Sit us down and paralyze us. Mm, mm, mm. You have to remember who your God is. It's not the man next door, the man across the street, the big cheese on your job, and it's not your man or your woman. God is the God that healeth thee. God is the God that supplies all your needs according to his riches in glory. God is the one in control. He's the master of the universe, not your boss. Not the one that gives you the loan. None of that is the master of your universe, baby. If God gives you favor, there's no monkey on this earth that can stop his show. What God has for you is for you. And one thing he definitely wants all of us to have is love, peace, joy, freedom, healing wholeness, security. He wants us to live an abundant life. So I ask you this, why have you become so subordinate, so so given to the wiles and attitudes and manipulations of people, to the words of people? Why are you bowing to this one, that one, and the other one? They did not bring you into this earth. I don't care if it's your mama. They did not bring you into this earth. God did. Your mother was the, was the canal baby. But if your mother is utterly against God, don't you dare bow to your mother. Respect her, yes. But you may have to stay far away from her in order, for, in order to stay away from her contaminants. You may have to stay far away from your father in order to do the same. Your lover your friend, your foe, your boss, your co-worker, whatever. Don't allow people to rest, rule, and abide over you. Don't allow people to lord over your life. Don't allow that. Some of them will try to lord over you with violence, intimidate you with money, intimidate you with fear tactics, all kind of ways. Make you ashamed. They'll lay guilt trips on you and, and manipulate you with, with shame tactics and blame tactics. They'll blame you when they're the ones at fault and make you think you're the reason they mess up everything. No, they're the reason, baby. They're the ones that are jacked up, toe up from the flow up. You didn't make them that way. They chose to be that way. And you can choose to walk away from someone else's nonsense. You don't have to get their doo-doo from their nasty diaper all over you. 
Walk away. Live your life. Find out what God has for you. Some of you don't even know who you are. You don't even know what you like. You don't even know what you don't like because you have allowed other people to manipulate you so much you wouldn't know you're behind if it turned around and bit you. So you have to go to God. He will introduce you to you. He will lead and guide you into all truth. He will lay the path ahead of you and make the crooked places straight and the rough places smooth, which means he'll smooth out all your rough edges, y'all. Are you interested in knowing what is there for you? Are you too busy trying to be a people pleaser? Huh? You're going to go to your grave as a question mark? Never ever getting to know who God is and never ever, get, never ever getting to know who you are. There are women out there who have never lived on their own. They are terrified of living alone. Oh, let me tell you, baby, living alone could be very heavenly, especially when you have a relationship with God. But when people clutter your life, clutter your thoughts, clutter your emotions, clutter all your priorities, that, that you're so caught up in everybody else, you don't even have time to think for yourself. Your life can be a ball of confusion. Your life can be a, 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 a bag full of resentment. Because you never had a chance for you. Ask God to make a way for you to find your path in life. Find your purpose in life. He called you. He's got his hand on you. Do you care where, what he'd like to do with your life? Do you care what he'd like to do within you? The deep work he'd like to do? Do you care? Or are you so caught up with the cares of this world, the cares of people's opinions, the cares of everybody else's needs, and you actually believe you don't count in the scheme of things? Well, that's a lie from the pit. Seek God and let him hold his mirror in front of you. Take a good look at God's truth through God's eyes and get to know you for once in your life and move in your own direction. Follow your own path. Then you can be a blessing to a lot more people when you're doing what you were put on this earth to do because you will do that with excellence because God already gave you all the gifts and all the equipping you need to do it with. But if you never explore, if you never go in and possess your own land, you will always, your life will always be squatter's field where everybody else comes in and bulldozes their way. And you will never get to know why you were here. You will spin around like a spinning top trying to figure out which way to go, chasing your tail like a dog, running around in circles, going nowhere fast, burrowing a, a hole for you to fall into, a rut. Do you want to know what you were put here for? Do you realize everybody is here for a purpose? Well, guess what? You are just as important as they are. Find out from God why he placed you here. He wants you to come to him and ask him. He's the only one who knows y'all. Go to the master planner. Go to the potter who created you in his loving hands. You were made for a purpose. You were here for a reason. You're loved with an everlasting love. Find out who you are for once in your life. God bless you. You will find that life will definitely become a life worth living for you.
Amen.